we're all, I'm sure, we all look back at our histories and say, how did we end up where we are today? My, my healthcare career began back in Connecticut uh, as an emergency paramedic and uh, working the streets during some of the most critical times of healthcare. You know, I was an accounting and finance major, took a job with Deloitte, thought I was gonna take a few months off in the summer and start in September. And they called me and they said, we have exciting news. We just won the Brigham and Women's Hospital audit. I, I said that I wanted to be mayor of the city of Boston. Um, yeah, so, um, Ron Walsh, it was there. Yeah, it must just come with the Walsh gene. Um, I actually got out of high school, Burlington High School. Uh, the home of MHA and went into the arm uh, uh, to become a helicopter pilot. And it turned out I, I'm too big to fit into the cockpit of a helicopter. So uh, they retrained me as a uh, combat medic and then eventually a respiratory therapist. People often say, well, where, where, did, where did you go from poetry to this? Um, and I think it was, uh, it was an interesting, uh, it's an interesting question. I was also a minor in chemistry. So I was always interested in, again, how things fit together in very complex structures. And that was coupled with a fundamental desire to help people. I was actually um, a history major as an undergraduate, and I was sitting at one of those, like, you know, get to know the professor and get your grade up lunches. And um, and everyone who went around the table said that they were gonna go to law school. And, um, and my dad was a policeman, and I remember him telling me, you know, Katie, you should be a judge. You can't beat the hours. And, um, and so that was sort of what my career path was. And this professor just sort of said in passing, you know, you guys should think about healthcare. And I was like, Oh, healthcare, like what's that? My dad was an old fashioned general practitioner. He had an office right in our house in East Springfield. Literally, you could open the door, uh, the wrong door in the house and wind up in the waiting room. So he was a solo practitioner and he was the only doctor in the 16 acres neighborhood. So he was the doctor to all my friends. My mom also was a nurse who trained at the Springfield Hospital. So the influence of medicine was unbelievably strong in our house to the point where all five Kerouac brothers became doctors. Who's, who's up there now? Uh, so those are my uh, brothers. I'm the one that has the, uh, the correct tie on. That's a children's hospital tie on. Uh, what my parents instilled in me as a child is the importance of work ethics, being out there, uh, going the extra mile, uh, doing what you need to do to really be very supportive to the community around you. I love being a nurse. I use my nursing skills every single day of my job. And my five years working um, at now Boston Medical Center and then at this real in the intensive care unit really helped me to understand what patients and their families go through when they enter the healthcare system. What probably got me most interested in healthcare was a personal um, incident where um, in my freshman year in college, uh, I was in a bad car accident um, on the New Jersey Turnpike uh, and uh, wound up in a, in a hospital for six weeks. I had uh, uh, fractured two parts of my vertebrae. Uh, I was, it was touch and go whether I was gonna make it or not. And what I learned through that experience was the importance of teams in healthcare. Because of the situation in Lebanon at the time, the opportunity to really uh, grow uh, in the professional field, uh, I was in high school at the time, um, it was very difficult. And um, I ended up migrating, immigrating to the United States at the age of 17 after finishing high school um, with um, no family, no money, and no English. Uh, and uh, through a lot of uh, support from many people uh, that I did not know. I met uh, as, uh, as somebody who's new in this country. Um, I succeeded and here I am. As a physician, you're trained to fix things and to, uh, you know, uh, in, the, in the old school at least, to work as a silo. Of course, now we know that quality and good care is, is dependent on teamwork, uh, even, you know, down to the local clinical level. That's certainly true uh, at, the, uh, at the leadership level. And um, the most important thing that a leader can do is to surround herself or himself with people who are much, much better uh, 
uh, than they are at almost everything that needs to be done. This is not a one-man game, it's a team sport. And if you've got great people working with you that can allow me to take on additional responsibilities, to be able to support and help, you can't do that unless you've got great colleagues, great associates, and very talented teams that are in place to keep, uh, uh, keep the home fires burning and making sure that everything's going as it should. And that change involves how we recruit, how we develop our workforce uh, to make it a workforce that is more diverse, more inclusive, how we educate our boards and infuse our boards with uh, diversity, uh, how we continue to create an environment where health equity across the board is important and we're addressing it. Uh, and those are just three of the topics, three of the issues that MHA is working to support our hospitals in, in, in their journey.